Okay, so now that you've got your walls done uh, to your ledger board, uh, it's time to take a look at the floor. Um, I've got a cabinet going in here as we spoke of earlier when we were doing the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've got a toilet flange right here to go around and then the rest is pretty square and pretty easy. I'll have a Schluter strip at the doorway as well. So um, what I'd like to do to start um, is build a base for my cabinet uh, to, put it, to put down on the floor to dry fit my tiles up to. Um, if you don't have your cabinet at this point in construction, you can tile underneath the whole area and level your cabinet on top of that. That's an acceptable way. Um, some cabinets have plastic legs, some have full closed off boxes. I'm using knockdown cabinets that I build plywood bases for, set them level and drop my cabinets on top. So for my situation, I am going to install that base before I do my tile floor layout and then I'll proceed to do a dry fit with the floor tiles just to make sure everything's perfect again and that I like everything and then I'll mix up some thin set and glue down this floor. So um, come along to the garage with me, we're going to start building this base. Okay, so um, now we're back into the garage here. I've got my um, plywood ripped to four and three quarters high, um, and I've ripped it to the length of 42 inches. Um, the cabinet base I'm building is 42 inches by 19, so I've got my four studs here, cut at 19 minus the thickness of these two, which is an inch and a half off of that, so 17 and a half for my stud pieces and 42 inches for my top and bottom plates. Very similar to framing a wall. I'm gonna do my 16 on center layout down the center. I'm gonna use my pneumatic stapler, uh, shoots these staples to build my framework and then I should be ready to install it into the basement.
Okay, so now I've got my 42 inch by 19 inch cabinet base assembled. I'm gonna bring it down to the basement, screw that down into the washroom and begin my dry fitting for my tile. Okay, so now that you've got your uh, base built in place, um, time to just throw a level on it, check it out and then screw it down. Um, when I'm screwing it down to the floor, I'm just going to screw it into the base plate of the wall across this wall and the base plate across the wall here. Not too worried about hitting studs. In this situation, the force from the cabinet is all downward. Not necessary to get crazy with how you fasten this in. Um, so hitting the bottom plate on the two sides would be sufficient enough. Okay, so very securely fastened in cabinet base. Um, now I'm gonna proceed with finding the center line of this washroom floor so that I can figure out my tile layout. So I'm gonna start laying out the tile on the floor. Um, for starters, I need to find the center line of this washroom floor. Um, you can see on the wall here, um, the reason I'm going with the center floor tile pattern is that I've got a center pattern happening on the wall. So this is my center point again for the wall. I've just got to find a way to transfer this point down to the floor and then I can figure out what I'm doing down there. So I'm just going to take a total measurement of the width, mark a pencil line, pencil line by the edge of the tub and go from there. Okay, so that's the center um, line of the bathroom. I'm going to take another measurement parallel off this wall to get over just so I can make a dry line down through there. So. Okay, so now that you've got your center line, you need to figure out if your full tile is going to be on the left side of the line or if in fact it's going to be first tile on the center, like center of the tile on the center line. So how I determine that is if I, if I start off the line here like this, My, this would be my second tile. Now this third tile is a little strip, less than half of the tile. So if I adjust my layout, um, if I adjust my layout by half the tile, I'll be adding half a tile to this strip and it's more aesthetically pleasing to see a larger border tile. It also helps with hiding the flaws. So I've marked a center line on this tile. I'm going to put it on this tile and dry fit into the wall and see if I'm happy with that layer. As you can see here, this is over half a tile, so this is much better looking than a thin strip. Um, so this is the layout that I'm gonna go with. Um, now that I've got my 
tile sitting on the center line, I could just use my pencil and mark this edge of the tile, and that would be the line that I'm gonna run my tile off of. So, on my pencil, double check that I'm on there. So you can see center line, edge of tile. So this is my new line that I'm gonna run the um, floor tile dry pattern off of. Um, another thing that I wanna do, I like to start with a full tile against the bathtub, but I also need to know what it's gonna end like at the doorway because I do not want a little piece at the end of the doorway. So I'm just gonna do a rough dry fit from the tub down to the end of the door here to double check what that piece is gonna be before I get set on this layout. I am gonna be, I am gonna be using um, quarter inch shims when I go, or sorry, 3 16th inch shims when I go to put this floor down. But for this purpose, I can just dry fit it by eye just to see what happens at the end. Okay, so you can see here that if I start with a full tile against the bathtub, um, I do have a greater, um, like I do end with a, a full tile at the doorway. Um, the Schluter edge is supposed to be halfway underneath the door. This door swings inward, so this line that I've got right here is three quarter inches back from the door, or from the wall edge. That is gonna be center line of my door, so I'm gonna be cutting this tile off just three quarters of an inch, um, which is perfect for me. That's like, that's like a really good scenario. So if it had been short like that, if it had been short like that and I was putting this thin piece in, I would adjust my layout at the bathtub to make it larger over here. So um, in my case, I'm going full tile off the bathtub, but you'll have to do a dry fit to see what pattern is gonna work best for you. Okay, so now that you've done your dry fit to the door and you're happy with your layout, uh, in my situation I'm using a full tile against the tub. Um, in doing so, I have also gave myself the indicator point for the edge of my tile, which is right there. I'm going to measure off the wall to that point and transfer it down further and chalk that line right through. Or in my, in my case, because it's a small area, I'm just gonna use my level as a straight edge and connect the pencil line all the way through, so. Three foot quarter. Okay, so now that I've got this line parallel with this wall, I'm not exactly sure if the bathtub is square with this wall or if the other wall's even square. So I'm gonna proceed by taking some measurements off this line to the wall, to this cabinet base, just to get a sense if the, if the line is square or if I've gotta make some adjustments. So, got my framing square. 
Just gonna run it parallel on this line. Okay, so I'm running parallel on this line, and when I check to see if my bathtub is square, I'm seeing an even gap from one end to the other, which would lead me to believe that the, this wall is square to this bathtub line, which is a good sign because that's a majority of where your eye is gonna focus when you come into this washroom. So I'm just gonna proceed by checking a couple more spots, but uh, looks like I'm gonna be happy with this center line down through, so. Okay, hold on one sec. Yeah. Just show this. Yeah, let me put it right up. Okay. See, like that is that is wicked right there. Like, you get that at home, you're not gonna have any problems. Cool. Okay, and what is fake me measuring these? Don't get super close on the tape measure, maybe pan out, because I think there is gonna be some little differences, and I don't know how good people's eyes will be. Okay. You all set? Yep. Okay, so um, that's all looking good for me. Now I want to create an intersecting access point um, down through this line, so that I've got a so I've got one cross line to work the tile off of as well. So what I'm going to do is dry fit two rows of tile in, find out where that edge is, and then square off this line a line down through. So. Got my 3 inch floor shims. Okay, so I've Okay, so I've dry fit two tiles in off the tub. Um, then I've added the grout width joint and marked a pencil line at this intersecting point. Now I chose to use the tile edge for my indicator line rather than center of grout joint. Um, you could select center of grout joint or this edge of the tile, whichever you choose. So I'm going to move this tile out of the way, take my framing square, nice and parallel on this line, follow my pencil up the other one. Back on my indicator point, parallel on this line. Okay, so these four bays should be exactly square. Okay, so now that I've checked the four bays, know that they're all square, I'm just going to use my level to extend the line right to the wall. So, Oh, 
All right, so now I've got the access point for the floor tiles. I'm using this line to follow the exact edge of this, the exact right hand side edge of this tile. I'm using this line to represent the third row top edge of the tile. So um, everything's square. I'm going to proceed with the full dry fit of this room, which means setting the tiles in their exact location, figuring out all my cuts before I mix up my glue to glue it down. So I've got my uh, tile um, first three pieces uh, dry fit on um, and I've got my end piece cut to size. Now I've got the Schluter piece here that comes down from the walls. Um, one method to deal with this would be to um, line the tile up with the bottom, guesstimate how much thin set is going to add to the thickness and then mark the Schluter and cut it. Then when you're gluing down the tiles, go underneath of them. Um, that's fairly tricky to do because sometimes you have a little bit more thin set built up there or, or not enough and you're not right flush with the underside of the Schluter. So in this case for me, I'm going to make a notch into my tile at the exact location of where the Schluter is. And that way when I bring my wall tiles down, they'll just land right on top of this tile perfectly. So I'm just gonna dry fit. Get in there and I'm gonna mark this point and then go to my wet saw and just cut it a blade width to a blade width and a half uh, to the depth of the Schluter. Um, same on the other side. Okay, so we're at the wet saw here. Got my pencil line marked onto the tile. Got a scrap piece of that Schluter. So, like I said before, we're just gonna use the thickness of the blade to notch into the tile the depth of this Schluter piece.
Okay, so now I've got my floor all dry fit in. I've used my 3 16 shims in every location that I'm going to when I glue it down. Um, I followed my pencil line across here perfectly and my access point line there. And then the rest of it was just relying on the shims to uh, keep the correct spacing and line. So um, if you're doing a larger floor, you're gonna wanna put more lines on so that you have references that you're getting back to your exact situation with your dry fit. Now, if you have a dry fit done and you stayed on your lines and it looks this good and ready to go, then it's time to pull it out, keep everything in order and mix your thin set up and get ready to glue it down. consistency to the thin set um, you don't want it too dry um, because it'll be really hard to spread with the trowel but you don't want it too wet that when you spread it or comb it out that it slumps down it's got to kind of hold its own weight up so mix it um, drier than wetter that's for sure basically follow the directions that's on your thin set start by using less water and adding to it like you saw me do to get the right consistency. Now I've got to let this sit for five minutes, five to 10 minutes, remix it up without adding any water, and then I'm ready to use it on my floor. Most thin sets that I've used have that additional step um, to allow the uh, chemical reaction within the thin set to happen uh, in that first five to 10 minutes, then you beat it up again so that it's ready to go. So. We're gonna wait five minutes and then we're gonna get back at it. Okay, so now I've got my thin set all mixed up, ready to go. Um, here's the trowel that I was using for the wall tiles. It was a quarter inch by quarter inch. Uh, specified me to use that for the size tile. Um, with the size floor tiles that I'm using and the thin set adhesive that I'm using, my direction is that are telling me to use a uh, quarter inch by three eighths notch trowel. So um, that basically, as you can see here, will leave a higher um, combed line when I spread it out. So this is my specified tile from the manufacturer of the thin set, coinciding with the size tiles that I'm using. So.
Okay, so if you notice here, um, I've mixed my thin set perfectly. When I'm combing it out, you can see that it does not slump down. It's maintaining its exact position that it comes out of the trowel. So if you're not seeing that you've mixed your, if you're seeing it drop down, you've mixed your thin set too wet, you need to get rid of that batch um, because you can't remix and add water and add powder after you've went through the process. So um, anyways, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, I spread it out thin with the trowel to start and then comb it out after. So just gonna get this section done and throw it on the tiles. Okay, so that's looking that's looking really good. I'm gonna grab my tiles and start fitting them in. Now, when I set a floor tile, I like to get it in its rough location, let it fall down, make sure I'm on my line. Now I'm just very loosely setting them for now. I'm gonna use my hands and maybe even possibly this rubber mallet to set them to get the heights all flat together. Set your tile in on your edge. Drop it, slide it over to its position. Okay, so now that you've got your first section glued down and set down and shimmed apart, you wanna take something flat like a level and just kinda of see how the tiles are lined up with each other. You wanna get this floor as flat as possible and, and true with each tile. So um, grab a straight edge, begin to look at how it's sitting. You can see that this tile is a little higher than this one, so I can Wiggle it down. Just kind of start checking all over with each other. Now that I've got them relatively where I want, I'm just gonna give one last firm press to them just to make sure they're in the thin set really well and then carry on with spreading some more glue out.